Well, guy, today <laughs> is a special day because combine two of our biggest loves into one video. Two of them? Yeah. What's that? For moi. <laughs> For moi. Aye. John Grennan and Sons Mill, one of Ireland's leading millers and fertilizer everything is done under this roof. John will explain all of that later. And for you, some of the nicest liveried scanningers you can ask for. When we so go, right, go, go and get a chat, we go and chat with you. a couple of ones here and see yeah. what the cry huh? is. Here is John. Tell us a little bit about your business. Well, basically, ours is a family business. Um, been here since shortly after the famine times. Wow. In in, in uh, different guises over the years, originally as a hardware, then as when I was a kid, was a machinery dealership. We were main agents for Pierce Farm Machinery. My father did a bit of contracting and a lot of farming, and uh, my mother also came from another agribusiness. So as my father was contracting, he gradually got into supplying chemicals as well as applying them to crops, then fertilizers, and uh, there was always Traditionally, the bags of flour and the bags of pig meal yes. had been sold from the cross above our original location for, for generations, really. Then we went into the feed business back in the 70s, 80s, and gradually the business here was growing. So rather than be mixing uh, rolled barley in an old shed under a loft with a shovel and that, we decided we'd mix it up here. We'd use the forklift that we had in the business. It could shovel better than I could, or whoever was, <laughs> was giving me a hand. Meganization. Yeah. <laughs> but John, that's back a few years. That's a very humble beginning of, of, of getting into the feed business. Fast forward us now to 2021, and what's out around us here is not scooping a few scoops into a bag anymore. No, absolutely not. Look, I'd never have dreamt that we were we were going to be in, or I was going to be, or any of us that we were going to be running anything like this. What we have here now, I think a lot of the success really that we found was that we started off selling what we were feeding our own cattle, and we found that people were very very happy, and they got performance. You mean with any nutritionist or people who come in here afterwards to do formulation and say. You look at the value of each product and you decide, okay, if we were feeding our own cattle at home, would that product make it into that ration at that price? And if it does, it goes in. If it doesn't, if there's something that's better value, then we use that. We never base our, our formulations on the least cost model. We base on, on what, what is right for the particular animal that it's going into. Can you bring it back to the very basic step? Laurie comes in with a load of raw materials. What happens before that's turned into a finished product, going through your system? Well, the first thing the lorry driver will have examined the raw material wherever he will have been loading it. He'll, he'll have taken a sample at that stage and, and assessed it himself. The sample, when he arrives, will be handed into the Weybridge for further analysis and testing later on. He will be sent uh, then to wherever his tipping point is, usually into the intake for the mill. So the product will then flow from the Weybridge through into the mill into raw material bins. It will then, the various formulations in the mill will, will be, having been put in by our nutritionist Tim or, or some of his colleagues, the products will be weighed out to those recipes. They will go through a grinding, mixing process. If they're for coarse ration, they will just have molasses applied and it'll come out and fall from the belt. If they're going for a cubing, they, they will be ground and they will go into pre-press bins. From there, they will be taken when the lads in production are ready, taken through the presses, so they will have uh, steam and molasses added, and they will go through the conditioner, then the top press and bottom press, out through a cooler. The presses, the idea of them is, is to compress the nuts. Uh, the conditioner helps in that process in, in mixing the steam and the molasses better through the product. So at that stage, it goes from the second press into a cooler, where there's cold air drawn through it to take the heat out of it. It then goes up to the top of the mill, where it goes through a sieve for the dust to be taken out that goes back in to be recycled. 
then the product will, will move to an, an outloading bin. From there, it will be taken off as, as the orders come in for the trucks. And is it mostly six mil dies or six mil nuts or five mil? Do you... We're working on, on six mil at the minute, yeah. And a scene there in the shop, you've recently started manufacturing, I call them rules, bigger. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We refer to them as cobs. We've started making them. They're, they're an awkward enough product to, to <laughs> manufacture, but um, I, I reckon it's worth it. And I, I think that when people have gotten onto them, that uh, there will be good. Now, the bagging plant, I must admit, now, I did not expect to see as many bags about, so that must be a fairly large part of what you do um, because there's a lot of bags in there. And you even have them stacked, you won't, you know, you have a, you have a cool <laughs> stacking system. It's a lovely automated plant, but it's a very accurate system. It's a double way system, yeah. and even at that, Keith pulls every one off every so often and drops it on the scales, yeah, uh, and, and cross references the weight. And I think he pulled off one when we were there, and it was absolutely bang on twenty five point oh nine, which you know takes in for the bag, and that, so it's like that's accuracy. We don't want to give away free feed, but that is <laughs> more important than that. We don't want to leave our customers short. That's something else that's, that's pretty special here. So not only are we making feed here, you're also target fertilizer. Is that a recent venture, or have you been doing that a long time? We started in 1996, 97 to import a bit of fertilizer ourselves here. We, we were very fortunate to um, strike up a partnership with Coney Farland in, in Wexford. And we, along with them, developed the Target Fertilizer Company. In fairness to them, they've done most of the work on that. They look after um, most of the affairs of Target Fertilizer and have been doing an excellent job. And I think we have the best fertilizer product on the Irish market co coming from there now. Absolutely, and your your plant here, you can see there's great care and great effort put in. And I'll tell you what, the bit that impressed me the most was whenever the four bags were getting the skirt kit on. <laughs> Not only are we selling the fertilizer and are we creating the meal and formulating the diets and looking after all our customers, the length and breadth of Ireland. We have a shop here, we have some veterinary supplies. We also have chemicals I spied. So we also, there's an agronomy side to what you do by the looks of things as well. Yeah, one of the advantages we, we reckon we, we get from having our own agronomy side is that we go into seed selection. So in other words, like the quality of feed doesn't start with the lorry arriving on the Weybridge. The quality of the feed that we produce starts on the varieties of seed that we start to look at in terms of uh, what kind of quality grain is that seed going to produce? What kind of spraying programs is it going to need to be the best it can be when it arrives in, on our Weybridge? So we, we have a well-established agronomy team looking after all that and making sure that the grain that comes back in here is the best possible quality. It's almost from soil to fork. We even seen a sample of grass going through earlier on that was getting tested, uh, I'm assuming yeah. for sugars at this stage yeah. to see, or nitrogen. It was a pre-cut test for silage, yeah. To see for silage, you know, so when you're providing that level of service with everything that you're doing, it's fantastic. So uh, we are now in the, the hub of the transport side at J Grennan's. We're joined with Kestis here. We know the lorries are awesome. Is that to do with you? Or is that company ethos? I say that's, that's the whole company. And my job is as a transport manager to make sure all them lorries are going and delivering the, what customer needs. I, think I have the team behind me, the good strong team behind me who's on the phone eight hours per day, putting the loads together and allocating jobs every day for the drivers. Now we have got to look at the map. You're not just within a 20 miles or 20 kilometer radius of the base here in Burr. You are all over Ireland to the very ages. There must be a lot of planning. You said you have a team of people working on that. It must be a tough job. Uh, we go to the land and the breadth of the country. There is no small or big runs. We kind of trying to do our deliveries in the most efficient and fastest way as possible. Well, it is because transport is one of the biggest costs in any industry. That's true, yeah, that's, and that's correct. It's no different 
here because you have a lot of input, a lot of output. You have all your raw materials in, all your raw materials out. So as you say, it's about organising it. So you need your curtain siders because you run a very successful uh, fertiliser bag, bag, bag deliveries. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, we have the number of blowers. We have a number of bulk tippers and we have a curtain siders and multi trailers, which is four clip mounted in the back. We try to hit all customers' needs. Make sure we can deliver the product for every customer in this island. That's well, right. look, Kestis, thank you very much for giving us a couple of minutes, a little bit of an insight into your role within the, the Jay Grennan and Sons business. And uh, we'll uh, maybe see some of your trucks up beside us in Balamina someday. No bother at all. <laughs> I, I make sure it's going to happen then. No Good man, thank you. Niall couldn't be with us today. He's disappeared for today, but he looks after the business with you, John, is that correct? He, he does, yeah. But Niall and uh, Sheila, my daughter as well, both of them are involved in, in the business. Brian, my eldest son, was here in the business with me and he, yeah. he, he was the one who was very much involved and unfortunately, back in, in 2013, yeah. we lost him to a disease called sarcoidosis. Now, he, he'd started off um, driving tractors and fertilizer spreaders, and he'd gone from there into the lorries that, it, that I had got rid of when I took over from my father. He loved the lorries. He loved the lorries. He, 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 the he lorries. Had, had a passion for, for the lorries, and yeah. he, he enjoyed it. And not long uh, before he passed away, he won um, Award for best livery up at a truck show in in Bondello, I think it was, and we had the agonising decision then: do we stay with the trucks, or do we make life simple or whatever? And we decided if we were going to stay with them, we were going to keep them to the standards that he had set. And it's lovely to see on the trucks the name and the headboard. Yeah, um, but, but be, be grand and transport yeah, and so on. Absolutely, them, yeah. absolutely lovely and very, very sorry for your loss. We know, we know you. from being around the truck shows, Guy and I love our truck shows, say we always think of your lorries as being turned out to absolute perfection and the way you spec them up, the way you deliver them for your drivers, the comfort that the drivers have. Yeah, if uh, things go wrong, we would like a job driving. If we could do if we could do that there. Now I can't promise there wouldn't be a few scrapes on them. <laughs> but as I say, from the most humble of beginnings, pretty much on the corner of this site, if I have got that right, to this brilliant business out there working for the farmer and with the farmer alongside the farmer. Um, yeah. helping him to be the most profitable that he can be and you have a clear vision for growth and a clear vision for strategy you know from the services that you offer to the people that you have rallying around so absolutely massive respect um, for the business that you've built and thanks very much for letting us come and Ta take a look and having you a part of our show Ta thank you very much for your kind words and and for choosing to come here it's it's much appreciated